when you have an older sibling that's involved in certain things, usually the younger sibling's right behind them. The, pretty much gives a tag along. So that's where pretty much I was basically knowing about what the Zulu Nation and Knowledge Yourself and everything that was going on at the time. Uh, I left the Army when I was 17. Uh, that was back in 1990. Came back, um, affiliated myself back within the Zulu Nation. Uh, was given my own chapter, but I had a chapter of youth. And my responsibility that I picked up upon myself was to make sure the kids were going to school, getting their grades correct, any problems at home that I would try to situate with the family, uh, times that the family didn't have money, I would take out of pocket and, uh, you know, help help with um, uh, notebooks, things like that, stuff they needed for school. I would do that. Um, during that time also, I was catching a little beef within the Zulu Nation because the Zulu Nation wanted dues every month. And my whole thing about that is you have 12, 13, 14 year old kids you shouldn't be asking them for money. You should be giving them money. And that, I, that's where I started having problems with them and started keeping a distance from them. Uh, a couple of years later, about 92, I started getting within the inner circle. Uh, B.O., which was head of shockers at that time, was also doing security. Uh, he knew I was in the military. He knew my older brother also. Um, when, I'd be back, when, I'm, when I would come to New York, I would pull security at certain clubs and uh, certain celebrities. Uh, and that was pretty much about it. Then I started getting closer and closer within the inner circle, being around Bambada, being around Ahmed, being around TC Islam. Um, <clears> TC <throat> Islam was also a friend of my older brother. At that time, uh, there's always rumors. But I always looked at rumors as being rumors. If I don't know, if I don't see for myself, it's just a rumor. I can't sit there and say, yeah, this is this person if I'm not seeing it with my own eyes. Um, so comes the instance of the day. TC, I, and a few other individuals within the Zulus, we always club hopping a lot, Palladium, uh, a couple other ground spots downtown. And uh, that night, we was headed to the we were supposed to be headed to uh, Palladium that night. Um, usually the apartment was always packed. It was always packed with people, everybody hanging out. So a lot of times, if you had movies that you bought from the Chinese guy for $5, you either went in the living room or you went to Ben's room. I may have pretty much kept people out of his room. But the problem was uh, when I went in that night, living room was packed, it was packed with people I ain't know, uh, plus, the, plus the people that we was headed out to the clubs with, and I forgot, I don't remember exactly which movie we bought, but it was an old Chinese Kung Fu flick, so we went to Bam's room, and Bam was sitting in there, so it was myself, Raheem, Raheem was an individual that always had problems, and whenever I was around, he was always by my side because I was pretty much always talking to him. He had somebody to talk to. And a lot of street beef he had, I ended up getting him getting him out of that street beef. So we go into the room. I'm minding my business. We're watching the movie. And I grew up on the Saturday three o'clock specials. Always it was either Godzilla, King Kong, Chinese flicks. You know, that was the Saturday specials, Sunday specials. So I was I was more into the movie than what was anything else going around so just that I, I can't even put it but just something just caught the side of my view where I just you know I turned around and I saw what the fuck was going on and it's just straight disgusted me you know it, it was just a grown ass man messing around with a 16 year old kid that I, 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 you know, it, it's, in other countries you get killed for that stuff, but, you know, I, I flipped out, I flipped out, you know, I got up, you know, what the fuck you doing, you know, you got Bambada touching Raheem's dick, like if, like, and Bambada's, you know, trying to touch, you know, trying to touch my leg saying, 
you know, it's okay, everybody does this. And as soon as that happened, I just started beating the living fucking shit out of them. So, everybody heard the ruckus because shit was just, it was a small room. It was a small apartment. So everybody came running in. One of the people that came running in was Ahmed. Ahmed came, you know, as a group. I know it was more than just one person that pulled me off uh, Bambada because I was trying to kill the motherfucker. But uh, they pulled me off, off of Bambada from beating the shit out of him. Got into Ahmed's room. Ahmed was like, what the fuck was going on? What's happening? That's Bambada, blah, blah, blah. I told him basically, I don't give a shit who the fuck it is. It could be the goddamn Pope, I don't care. You touching a little fucking kid. Y'all knew about this. Y'all been knowing about this. I don't know nothing. Bullshit. You don't live with an individual for so many damn years and not know what the hell's going on. Plain and simple. So, come and behold where, I've, I'm just finding out recently, where Bambada and my older brother had beef back in the day. And I ain't know about that beef. And B.O., B.O., rest in peace, was the one that kept the beef separated and squashed that whole beef back in 83, 84. So, Ahmed knew who the hell my older brother was. B.O. knew who my older brother was. A lot of people in the street know who the hell my older brother was at that time. And pretty much there was, don't tell your older brother, don't tell your older brother. They knew what was gonna happen if I told my older brother. I been pretty much told him, fuck you. I'm done with this, you know, y'all are full of shit. There's other better organizations out here for the youth than you guys. Y'all ain't doing shit in New York for anybody. And, you know, basically told them to go fuck themselves. After that, B.O. was coming in. And uh, I guess somebody called B.O. because usually, usually there's some instances where, I, where B.O. would show up and nobody was allowed upstairs in that apartment. And it was usually something because of security bullshit, you know. But B.O. walked in, <clears throat> I'm walking out, he sees me pissed off. Somebody called him and basically was like, you know, he looked at me and said, what the fuck happened? I told him what the hell happened. He said, don't worry about it. He said, ain't nobody gonna touch you in the fucking street. Plain and simple. He's like, I got too much respect for your older brother. He's like, nobody's gonna touch you. And that's it. I turned my back with Zulu. I called an emergency chapter meeting within my chapter with the kids. I pulled all, all their Zulu pendants off and I told them, if I catch you around Bronx River, I will fuck you up personally. And that was it. You know. Uh, what, where, did you ever see Raheem after that? Like, did you Raheem, ever speak Raheem, to him nah, about it? Did nah. you say, yo, like, I mean, could you, obviously, like me listening yeah. to it, I wouldn't think that was the first time. No, I, that, that wasn't the first time. From what my understanding is from other people that I've spoken to, it wasn't the first time. Everybody has, with the chapter he was in, everybody pretty much said he was a kid with problems and Bambada always had him. He was always, Bambada was taking care of him, quote unquote. And I know what that taking care of bullshit means. Um, now, was he Puerto Rican? He because was Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, dark skin Puerto, well, a little bit darker than me. Uh, he left to the Latin Kings. He got permission to go to the Latin Kings. I have no idea how, because um, he was Zulu, this Zulu, that. Everything was about the Zulu nation. And he was given permission to leave, which don't found to me, but I kind of figure out what was going on now because now he was embarrassed. And now you got to worry about who I'm, who I'm going to speak up to within you know his chapter and everybody else. Uh, I know other chapter members have spoken up about it that are no longer part of Zulu and th th this happened to be because of one of the reasons it was because of the nonsense, you know, and plus they were trying to make an all-girl chapter to handle the business within the Zulu nation not just the dirty business but the sexual part which I just found out last year about with a one of the females within Zulu that she left Zulu because she was like it was getting ridiculous but meaning the girls were supposed to be there to service the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, as yeah. a front because yeah. you know as in my research there are hardly any women in the Zulu nation yeah like it's, hardly it's, it's hardly it's hardly any a lot of it has to deal with street beef you know cops will not will not pretty much search a feet 
it ain't that many female cops to be doing it. And a lot of men, male cops kind of, because of the way the laws are written, they're, they're, a female isn't, isn't that much, if the female keeps herself correct and not looking like a hood rat, the female would, a cop ain't gonna really look at you. So now you got your drugs there, your guns there, and the, the, the personal aspect of handling other Zulus when they feel the need to do whatever. Uh, you know, TC told me about the, yeah. uh, he called them hospitality queens. Yeah. <laughs> do you know he told me that he was there in Bronx River that day? Yeah, he was. Cause, he, uh, did, he said he didn't know what happened. He didn't know what happened. was going on. See, TC, uh, at that time, being in the military and everything, um, and I've been in the military for a long time, in and out of the military for a long time. Uh, I kept away from the drug aspect because I'm not going to risk coming up, you know, coming up hot on a piss test over some bullshit and lose my career, my money, and my pension and everything that goes along with it just for smoking some weed or doing whatever. Um, TC happened to smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> TC was downstairs that day because I know he left the apartment because while we was waiting for more people to show up, he was downstairs. Uh, I left the back entrance of the building. TC was at the back entrance of the building. TC was like, yo, what's going on? I was like, I'm fucking out of here later, peace. And that's the last time I saw TC uh, until I recently spoke to him last year. And we were just uh, building on um, knowledge, you know, how you been, how's everything, yo, I haven't seen you, what you been up to, da 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 you know, just catching up on old times, and then we just started talking about everything that was going on within the Zulu. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, he's not, a lot A lot of people aren't trained to do things. You know, anybody can have a gun, anybody can shoot. Doesn't mean you're gonna hit somebody. It's not, it's not the aspect of being Army or, or the Marine Corps where we're trained to shoot you, you know, and we're gonna be on target. We don't shoot and spray, we don't do this, we don't do that. I told him plenty of times, watch yourself. If you're gonna leave New York, get the hell out of New York, but don't let nobody know where the hell you're going and don't go anywhere there's zoos at. And um, evidently, whatever happened, happened down in Atlanta. And I've been on top of that issue with Atlanta PD also. Uh, talking to the lead detective on the case. Uh, it's just, it's just the nature of the game. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's sad that one TC had to die that way. Um, Cause I know he knew a whole lot more than what was going on. And he didn't know that day of what happened. But even when uh, TC and myself spoke about that day, he was like, dude, I didn't know. I was like, yeah, it wasn't, it, it is what it was. You know, I got my licks in, he got knocked around a couple of times. That's it, you know, he, and TC was like, did you tell your brother? I was like, I told my brother, my brother be in prison right now. It would have been nobody stopping, nobody within Zoom would stop my older brother. And that's a fact, That that's a straight fact. Um, you know, I, I um, it, you weren't a person who joined the Zulu Nation trying to be hip hop and all no. that. You joined for the youth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, it was for the youth. Okay. Um, you know, my upbringing was my upbringing. It was the old school way. You know, you looked at your parents wrong. You got knocked around. <laughs> That's the way it was. You know, my father was always in the picture. If, if my mother felt that she couldn't handle something, she called my father, my father, five minutes. Take him five minutes wherever he was, and my, my face was in the ground, getting pounded on it. My father did not play those games. Um, and I was always around my older brother, plus my, the way my family is, it was family. That's it, you know, cousins, aunts, uncles, you touch one of us, expect one of us to come at you you know you're not going to see who's coming but you're going to expect it when it comes to dealing with the youth um there's aspects within being the military so you got to understand being the military is not just about fighting a war it's 
also humanitarian service, which a lot of people do not know about because the news just doesn't put it out there that we do so many things around the world and within our own country and, and our own communities. Uh, you know, there's instances where upstate New York had, uh, up, up around Mechanicsville, uh, had tornadoes hit, destroyed a whole, almost the whole town. We were up there doing humanitarian service. Uh, further upstate, there was the ice storms of, I believe it was 97, it was the ice storms. The roads blocked, snow five feet high. You know, we were running around giving generators, getting food, getting people out of their homes. It's, it's, it's not just a war. We do for the people also. A lot of people don't see that, but my whole thing was, if I could, if I could fix and help kids get their education and be on top. It's an ant. <laughs> oh. If I could fix, okay, go ahead. It's gone, he, he fell right. to the ground. But um, You said, if I could help kids. Yeah, if I could help the kids get, stay on track with their education, because during the 90s, the kids were just messing up. They were just going down and down. And, you know, I started seeing that. And a lot of these kids either had brothers or older brothers that were just messed up or in the street game. Um, families that were struggling, families just couldn't afford stuff or were just doing the wrong thing. Sometimes these kids just need that figure that, yeah, I'm bossy. I, I, I'm bored. I, you know, I'm bossy. I'm going to come down on you. I'm going to say what the hell I got to say to you, whether you like it or not. But sometimes a child needs that. A child needs someone that's going to be strong and say, hey, do your job, to do it correctly. If not, you're going to have to answer to me, and then we'll take it up from there. I can tell you right now, the kids within my chapter, the kids within, the kids within my chapter, a lot of them had really bad grades, uh, you know, pretty much failing. Within the next quarter, they were at C average. Within later on that year, they were B average kids. And what I was doing was, I would see, and I would ask for each, everybody's report card. I knew when everybody was getting their report cards. I said, "Give me your report card. Give me your report card." I look at it, it says, "Okay, you failing math. You got an A in math. Guess what? Your tutoring helped." And that's the way. That's the way it was supposed to go. And and the kids were fine. Yeah, I had to get on top of some kids because they that street mentality was it was hard to get them out of it but they were getting out of it um i could have done a lot with these kids these kids my whole purpose was with with the, with these kids were get your education go to college whether it's community college or university or state college what matters is the degree that's in your hand because the degree is what puts the money on the table to feed you and your family you know, now we know degrees don't mean, they're pretty much worthless, but at that time it meant something. Um, I even had some of the kids within my chapter talking about they wanted to go to the military. All right, fine. What job you want to do? Or I want to do don't 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 put your high, your, your, your aspects that high. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you mean? Military entrance exam is harder than the SAT. I'm letting you know that right now. You, you got to have to score a real high score just to get that job that you want and I'm gonna let you know right now you can't go get get arrested you know misdemeanors depending on what the misdemeanor is yeah you can get in felonies you ain't getting it but you also need security clearances too so that's FBI background checks and you know my whole thing was keeping keeping them clean getting them keeping their heads in school not worry about the street not worry about the drugs because there's a couple 13 year olds that were smoking and I had to jump on them about them smoking weed also um, but all in all within that year they they were progressing and they progressed very well and I would say the end of that year I had to start pushing them away from the Zulu Nation because now you had chapters within the, uh, within the Zulu Nation having beef with Latin Kings, having beef with Nyatas, having beef with La Familia, having beef with this, this, and that. And they were trying to get my chapter involved in that. I was like, hell no, you ain't getting them, these kids. 
No, it ain't gonna happen. No, that's your problem. You deal with it, you keep the kids out of this. They don't need this nonsense. This ain't the 80s and this ain't the 70s. You know, it's a whole different ball game. What is the future of the Zulu Nation in your opinion? So, okay. okay. All right. Uh, how I found out was I ran into Tracy Morgan. I knew Tracy Morgan from back in the day. Um, I also used to pull security once in a while for Tracy Morgan when he'd do the little venues when he was up and coming. Um, ran into him and he told me, says, hey, you know, you, you heard what's going on with Bam? I was like, what, the gay shit? You know, it's not, it hasn't changed. No, he goes, no, it's kids. And I looked at Tracy, I said, let me tell you something, don't ask me no more. I was like, walk away from the whole situation. And don't ever ask me again when it comes to Bam. So later on that day, see, I knew Poppy from the 95. I knew Poppy when he got locked up. Okay. Um, you know, I went went home. And I was like, let me see what the hell's going on. Let me, let me jump online and read all the, the nonsense that everybody puts out. I, kind of, I saw this in, in, in the Daily News. And I just laughed. You know, a, a few weeks earlier, I just laughed and gave, I was like, I was like, yeah, they finally got him. You know, uh, so, you know, I went home, you know, a couple hours later, I jumped online and just started looking at everything. Then uh, I saw the video with Poppy and I was like, I know Poppy. I was like, fine, finally, somebody's coming out and speaking. I was like, I don't know Beast and Ron Sandwich, but Poppy I know. So I kept going and going and reading and reading and reading. And then the Zulu Nation puts out, this is a co-intel, blah, 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 and all this crap. And I'm saying there, no, no. I know what Poppy's done for that Zulu Nation. I'm gonna speak on this. And that's when I came out and spoke about the situation and you know, what happened that day and the outcome of everything. Um, and that was it. We ran into our mid, i say about 2004, 2005. They weren't living in Bronx River no more. He moved out. I asked him why. He just said, because of situations. Uh, you already told me right there where he was. Um, and that's it. Okay? Didn't ask about Ben Bonner. They didn't give a shit. Uh, you know, he... I made was more surprised to see me because he thought I was just going out of New York for good. But uh, he saw me and, uh, you know, that was it. And I kept it moving after that. Then um, the aspects with the Zulu Nation. Uh, They're holding on for dear life. Yeah. And they, they are trying to be involved, like Yoda and all these other ones are yeah. trying to be involved with Yoda, the hip-hop museum. Yoda's full of shit. He's I know. been full of shit back in the day. Yeah. Almost ready, Ramel. Uh, okay. You know, he's been full of shit for years. Muhammad, me and Muhammad had some words at one time, and it had to do, again, with chat to do's with them, you know. And I told him, you ain't getting shit from me. You know, I was like, whatever chat to do's I get, goes right back to the kids and ain't going to you. If you guys ain't giving me money to give to the kids, then I don't give a shit. Uh, that's how I felt about it. Um, B.O. got involved in that little instance also, and B.O. Told, told, pretty much told them, was, don't ever ask me for money again. Uh, as it comes with the Zulu Nation, the Zulu Nation, the Zulu Nation just needs to go to fucking hell with me. They're full of shit. They've been full of shit. They're just... I'm not going to say that they're hanging on to it, there's a lot of cover-ups. The cover-ups been there for years. You know, as I said, you don't live in the same apartment with an individual sleeping in the room right next door and not know what the hell's going on in your own apartment when y'all been living together for four or five years. Get out of here. You're lying. Um, and, 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 and the council, they knew. They've been knowing. You gotta understand, too, a lot of them are fucking sweet. A lot of them, a lot of them are on the sweet side, you know, and a lot of them, they they're just there, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say, 
all three of them that they saying that are founders are not the goddamn founders. They're all goddamn sweet. Hip hop did not start down the freaking in with the Herculoids out of freaking Cedric Avenue. It started in Songview. It started in Songview with Ku DJ, um, with Disco Mario, with a uh, DJ D, and Tex. All Spades, all out of uh, Bronxdale, Songview area. That's where hip hop started. You know, we're talking the early seventies. All this shit of Bambada with KRS One bullshit saying he, he was the head of the Black Spades. He wasn't shit of the Black Spades. He was just there. He was an information guy. Wherever there was information needed, they sent him to get the freaking information. He ain't. He wasn't a warlord. He wasn't nothing else. That's it. He was a freaking gossip guy. You know. It's so funny how they, these legends have been allowed to proliferate yeah. like well, for a lot decades. of problems is, is you have, you have Mario died. Yeah. Okay. So there's nobody defending Mario. And Mario can't defend himself from the grave. You got D and and Tex and all and everybody else. They should have been speaking out a long time ago. I mean, really, it's 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 kind of sad. At the same time, it's you have KRS One talking all this hip hop history, and he's being fed the hip hop history by Bambaataa. And nothing's ever changed, you know. You know, it, it's it's you got Crazy Legs. Crazy Legs stole the break dancing move from from somebody from uh, TBB, the Bronx Boys, uh, which I knew. My older brother known him. They were good friends. Uh, hurt me when he died. Hurt my older brother a lot when he died. Uh, you know, Rocksteady was not the first breakers. Um, Rock steady, a lot of rock steady came from the Bronx Boys TBB. But you got, you know, a recent video that I saw was KRS, Ahmed, um, Crazy Legs, Bam. Bam couldn't even look up, look into the camera. Crazy Legs talking shit, and Crazy Legs is fucking sweet, and I don't give a shit what the fuck he says or what he's gonna try to do, because I'll smack the shit out of him. Uh, yeah, Richie. Uh, Ahmed is a hip hop scholar. Y'all are liars. Y'all liars. Because the history was dead. The history could have been so much better than what it is now. You got the you, the, you got the European zoos actually have a museum. And they bring school kids to learn how to DJ and dance and, and teach them some history. It ain't happening here. Because here's about who's cutting whose throat, who's getting whose money, and who's sucking whose dick. That's where it's going to, you know, as of the history of hip hop, the band bottom just needs to be totally erased, period. You fuck with little boys. There's witnesses on that. You ain't get stabbed up and get put in the hospital for no reason either. You gotta be erased. Either the old heads, Lord Jamal, Big Daddy Kane, I'm t and I'm gonna talk those that have knowledge of self, the five percenters that were in the game need to freaking step up and get that history changed and get them out of the books. And it's, 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 it's a crying shame that where it went to, but it's a crying shame that you gotta pray on little kids. They're 17 and up, you know, that's their business. 15, 16 people gonna say they should know better. Sometimes they don't, sometimes it takes years. It's just, you're not mature, you're scared, you want to you wanna be uh, part of everything, and you give into it, and you give into it. And then later on down the road, you realize, well, what the hell did I just do? After you wake up and, and see what you done did. But as a grown ass man, you should know you shouldn't be messing with little kids. I don't, you know, like I said, Raheem was 16 at the time. Raheem knew better. But he fell for the prey. There's, there's, there's no question about it. He fell for it. So he's not the only one. There's others still within the Zulu Nation that are still part of the Zulu Nation. And a few others that I know that, uh, I personally know that Bambada's gotten them. And they still run around as Zulus. 
and you know it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. They still got pictures. They still posting pictures, hanging out with Bambada. You still hanging out with Bambada out of all these years, and Bambada got you. You still fucking him. You still do his fucking. Way. But uh, with Poppy's situation, like I said, I was angered because he's done work, and then you're gonna call him a snitch, a rat, this and that. I mean, there's a lot of shit that he could freaking speak about and put people in prison within the Zulu Nation. But he didn't. He just spoke about what was going on, what was happening. But y'all want to come at him, so come at him. You know, he knows what he's doing. He's got people behind him to make sure he's on the right track to, to keep up the good fight. Um, when it comes to uh, the people, I'm sorry, but this generation is lost. They don't care. They just want to see a fight. That's pretty much what it is. They want to see a fight. They don't want to see nothing else. They, their, the attention span is, okay, I said it, I've seen it for five minutes. Yeah, I'm good. Don't even know anything else, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, no. You know, the, the, the youth, the youth is lost of, of today. The 70s and 80s early 90s we had a we had, we had a purpose we had a purpose of doing everything now it's just let's go riot for stupidity why don't you riot after the facts come out why you gotta wait i mean you know why you gotta start a riot now and don't even know what the hell is going on and that and that's the beautiful you know, can't can't put it no more no more straighter. I've seen kids in other countries that are got, got more balls than the kids here. So, <laughs> you know, sorry, sorry to put it that way, but it's the way it is. But, you know, anything else with Zoo, I really don't give a shit anymore. Uh, ever since that day, I, I cut them off. I don't listen to none of their music. Hip hop to me just went to trash. It, it's the movement, the fundamentals. Having having a, a genre where it educated you at the same time is gone. We ain't talk about drugs. We ain't talk, we ain't call women hoes. We ain't talk about shooting this and shooting that. You know, once in a while, within the tape, the recording or whatever artist, you might hear a little something, but a lot of it was educating. It made you go look things up. It made you we didn't have cell phones that we, like they do today. So you had to go to the library. You had to do research. And that's what you did. Now it's out there that will mislead you. But this is, you know, what, what more can I say? You know, I just make sure that my children are straight, you know, the education is strong, and they're doing what they need to do as, as adults. Zoo Nation just needs to fold up. They, they've been done. They have no youth. They had the youth when I was there. But they fucked that up. And they could have been strong with that youth. You know, very educated youth. That I, was, I was getting these kids. Education, education, education. You know, sports, education. Keep yourself out of the street. Get off the drugs. Stop drinking. 13, 14 year old sitting on the corner drinking a 40 ounce. I used to smack him in the back of the head when he would catch him. Yeah. Oh, bro, T. Oh, brother T. Oh, bro, T's coming. Everybody's throwing the drugs away, throwing the beers away, and everything else. And I'm coming. And I just said, I'd have him line up. Let me smell your fingers. Let me smell your breath. You got, if you got caught with, and, you know, if I smoke weed on you, if I smoke the alcohol on you, all right, we're going to the park. What you gonna do? What you gonna do, brother T? Oh, we gonna run. We gonna run. We gonna run till you puke. Trust me. Give him a lesson. You don't gotta be physical, but that mental is, is the most powerful thing where you can have towards a kid. But they respected that. They respected that. They had. They actually had an individual that actually cared. And they were. They weren't having that. And a lot of the parents were happy too because I was on top of these kids. He, you know, whether I was stationed upstate New York or stationed down south or whatever, I still made my time to make sure I called. 
or when I would come home on vacation, grab all these kids together and let's go. Let's go. Let's have a barbecue. Let's go play handball. Let's go play basketball. Let's go do something. The kids don't have that today. And a lot of, a lot of those within the Zulu Nation just were looking at me a, a wrong way because I was doing a total different thing than having these kids running in the street. So be it. But, you know, I was here for a purpose. Now I wasn't here to destroy. 